All right, we're in the dressing room with Roberto Duran and his interpreter and agent, Luis Enrique. Now, Luis, exactly what happened in Roberto's words? Exactamente qué es lo que pasó. Dile que me entró un calambre en el estómago y me me puse bien débil de brazo y de pierna y por eso fue que dejé pelear. He got cramps in his stomach and his body and the upper body and then his arms and he got weaker, so that's why he stopped fighting. He quit the uh, the, the bout. Does this mean the end of boxing for Roberto? Posiblemente este la el final de tu carrera. Sí, ya no peleo más ya. Yes, I'm not fighting anymore. This is final, permanent retirement. Definitivo. Ya, yeah, definitivo. No Definitely, peleo. I'm not fighting anymore. Final opinion on Ray Leonard. What does he think? Final opinion on Sugar Ray. No, que peleó nada. Yo lo vi muy lento a él, pero no podía poner presión porque él él tiene que dejar ese peso también. I saw him. Él él no es nadie. Me ganó punto porque me calambré y todo. I saw him very weak in the fight. But my body did not allow me to pressure him. But I didn't think he was that great. Tiene que dejar ese peso he also has to leave that weight because I could see that he was weak also. Well, thank you very, very much. Good luck. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, por favor. The way it was, November 25th, in Roberto's dressing room, from Duran's point of view at that point in time. Immediately thereafter, in that same dressing room, I went to Ray Arcel. Nobody questions ourselves' credentials, his distinction, his character, his integrity. This conversation. This, of course, is Ray Arcel, one of the two corner men for Roberto Duran through his whole long and very great career, together with Freddie Brown, the other corner man. Ray, at any point between rounds, did Duran complain to you about cramps or pains? Never, Howard. It's just said that his arm felt stiff, that's all. Were you surprised when he said he's through with boxing, he's retiring? Well, I wasn't surprised because I felt that sooner or later he would retire, maybe after this fight or, or after the Hearns fight, and that's what, that's what he was even talking about. And uh, I've never seen this young man behave in this manner I've been with him nine years. He's been through tough fights. And I was absolutely astounded. I wish I could give you an honest answer of what really happened. Well, I appreciate your honesty in expressing your puzzlement over the behavior. Frankly, do you think his pride was so destroyed by the manner in which Leonard fought him that he just decided it wasn't worth it anymore? There's a possibility that you may be right, Howard. I don't know whether it was frustration or whatever you might have said. I'd have to find out, I have to talk to him, I have to talk to his doctor to find out after he examines him if there is something wrong with him. But I heard you in the corner, you were telling him exactly the right things, that he had to fight his fight, that he had to get Leonard against the ropes, and yet it was Leonard who was able to fight his fight tonight. Leonard, Leonard controlled the fight. No question about it. Yes. I'm sorry to end it this way, Ray. All right, Howard. You've always been very kind to us, and we have to tell you the truth, and if I knew more about it, I'd be glad to relate it to Good you. Good luck to you, old friend. Thank you. So that was Ray Arcel. I want to be absolutely fair to Mr. Arcel. I've known him 30 years of my life. He is one terrific human being. He is over 80 years of age. He couldn't fly out here. He didn't even want to go to our studios in New York. He's been so beleaguered and so distressed since the fight and the way it ended. He did say to me that he later was told by another handler in the corner who spoke Spanish that Duran did complain of stomach cramps. And you observed very quickly in one of our pictures that there was, in fact, an ice bucket placed against Duran's stomach at the very end of the seventh round. But in all our review of all of our tapes, that was the only time we saw the ice bucket. That much made clear to you. I would like now to turn my attention to the champion again, Sugar Ray Leonard. First, Ray, do you feel cheated by the furor over the way the fight ended and the apparent fact that you're not getting a lot of ink, a lot of attention, a lot of being called a great champion? It doesn't bother me, Howard, because what was shown is quite evident. I beat Roberto Duran, and I beat him my way. The press, they said, by Duran quitting, does it tarnish my victory? How can it? 
I'm uh, asking you. No, I don't feel it, it has. Um, if I had complained about arthritis, or I said the reason I couldn't move in Montreal was because I had hemorrhoids, who would have believed it? No one. But you didn't have arthritis. Yes, so who's to say he had cramps? <laughs> All right, leave that for the moment. Did you feel Duran weakening very early in the fight? In the third, fourth round, I noticed that Duran was watching my feet, my movement, the way I was going around the ring. Inside, he wasn't as strong uh, as he was in the first fight. And that was because I was stronger. If you really look close at both fights, you would notice that the first encounter, Montreal, I was very thin. Duran looked huge. This time around, Duran was thin. I was huge. Interesting. Yet he came back and gave you a good going in the fifth round. You remember Dundee said to you, you lost that round. Wake up, true? Yeah, Angelo said uh, we lost that round unnecessarily. And um, I felt that um, the reason was I was against the ropes, like it happened in Montreal. All right. Ray, I'd like to turn now to the man everybody in America wants to hear from. I want to go to our affiliate studios in Miami and to Roberto Duran, surrounded by his, there he is, his physician, Dr. Nunez, and his interpreter, and that's Luis Enriquez. Roberto, I'd like to go back to Sunday before the fight, which was on Tuesday. I interviewed you at the arena, and you said you were in far better condition for this fight then than you were for the first fight. Now, how do you square that with what happened at the end? Uh, Roberto, el, dos días antes de la pelea, se te, te entrevistó en el Superdome y dijiste que estabas en muchas mejores condiciones que la última pelea. ¿Cómo explicas esto? Bueno, cuando uno está arriba del ring, siempre uno le pasa algo de repente, ¿no? When you're in the ring, there's always the possibility that something could happen to you while you're in the ring. And therefore, what you said before the fight, that you were in the best condition of your life was true at that time. Y lo que dijiste en el ring, en la entrevista, ese día de que estabas en tus mejores condiciones de tu vida, y eso es así. Sí, fue verdad. Yes, that's the truth. All right. Now, Luis, be clear about this question to Roberto. Ray Arcel told me that when he came to New Orleans, Roberto did, Roberto was already at weight. He said some leeches from Roberto's native Panama got around him and sneaked food to him. Is this true? Roberto, el señor Arcel dijo lo siguiente, que cuando él llegó a New Orleans, o sea, el señor Arcel, ya tú estabas en tu peso, pero que algunas personas, leeches, siendo personas negativas, supuestamente, estaban dándote comida a lo escondido. Is that mentira? Howard is asking that that's a lie. Is what? That's a lie. That is false. Okay. Then, Dr. Nunez, if that's false, why did Roberto get overweight? Because our cells said he was at weight. And why did you prescribe diuretics for him? Sir, by no... I have never prescribed diuretics to Roberto Duran because he was never in the need for di diuretics. Uh, Duran never was not in, the, in his weight when he was in New Orleans. And uh, 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 Mr. Duran never got to, to, to have any diuretics because his potassium was well, his sodium was well, and his whole urinary system was doing very well, so he didn't know diuretics at all. You only prescribe diuretics when an athlete uh, goes to the stress, does not uh, put his urine out, and he's swelling or something like that. But he was never prescribed diuretic. So I completely disagree with Ray Arcel, what he has just told. Did Mr. Aletta also say it? Uh, not that I recall. All right. Did then Roberto Duran have a weight problem? Do I, th I think, are you telling me that question? No, I'm asking you, sir. Oh, uh, 
I think every fighter got a weight problem. That's the, the, the main reason of all fighters, their weight. But, you know, I think with, a, with his training and everything, as a matter of fact, I, I, don't interview, I don't interfere with the training because that's not my job. How did my he get down to weight then for the weigh-in? Uh, come again, sir? How did he get down to weight for the weigh-in? Well, due to the fact of the training. I was observing the training and the way the diet that was prescribed, not by me, because I, once more I could tell you that I don't interfere with his diet. I want to, but they don't let me. All right. Then no diuretics were prescribed no, by sir. you. They were no not way. necessary. No, sir. All right. I want to take you, Roberto, back through the day of the fight. After the weigh-in, what did you eat and how much? Roberto, el día de la pelea, después del pesaje, ¿qué comiste y qué cantidad comiste? Bueno, primero yo me tomé un consumé, me tomé bastante. First, after the weigh-in, I drank some consumé soup and I drank a lot. Entonces me llevaron a un restaurante. Then I went to a restaurant. Me comí dos bistec grandes. I ate two big steaks. Y cuatro jugos de naranja. And four glasses of orange juice. Después me tomé una taza de té bien caliente. And after I drank a hot cup of tea. Y comí bastante papa frita y todas esas cosas. And I ha happened to eat a lot of uh, french fries. All right, how unusual is that for you on the day of a fight after a weigh-in because habitually you would eat in order to restore strength. Leonard ate, and he ate a lot after the weigh-in, for instance. Es esto algo usual que haces tú, ya que es tan importante de restablecerte el día de la pelea. Correcto. Yes, you're correct. I, he, he considered that's correct to reinforce the strength. He eats that, and that's not unusual. And it's not unusual. All right, I want to ask you this question very directly, Roberto. In the light of the way the fight ended, are you now sorry about your actions? Are you ashamed of yourself? Roberto, de la manera que terminó la pelea, ¿estás tú apenado de la manera como terminaste? Sí, por eso que voy a regresar al ring de nuevo, para pelear con él. Yes, because that's one of the reasons and the main reason why I'm coming back because I am ashamed of the way Padre it mío. happened and I want to fight Lennon again. I want to demonstrate to all my fans and all the boxing fans that Lennon cannot beat me. This time I'm going to train my way, I'm going to train the way I'm supposed to train because I know he cannot beat me. Que dar and he will have to give me a return match. I would like to make this point in fairness to Roberto as he sits there live in Miami and listens. Dr. Kenneth Nix of Southern Baptist Hospital in New Orleans, the man who examined and rendered the report on Roberto's condition, who examined Roberto and rendered the report, diagnosed his condition as acute abdominal distension. Now you say you want to fight Leonard again. I want to turn to Sugar Ray Leonard again, thanking you very much for coming up from Panama because I know that you're not well. Ray, you heard what Duran said. Will you fight him again, ever? No, Howard. For a simple reason. The first fight, which was a very close fight, Roberto Duran gained the victory. And people said, hey, that's not supposed to happen to a champion. And then in New Orleans, I beat Duran and it was such a bizarre ending. People said, hey, fix, fix, fix. And now they're saying a third fight. They would, the, I think the press would kill it. I think he will, the press will destroy any promoter that try to promote the fight. Uh, I feel that it wouldn't be in the best interest of boxing. All right, implicitly, Ray, you've just touched on another factor, perhaps without even realizing it. So I must go back to Roberto and Luis Enrique. In innuendos, allegations, nothing in any sense proved about you, Roberto, and the stories have been suggesting that perhaps you were taking or sniffing cocaine. Is there any truth to this? Roberto, después de la pelea han habido muchos comentarios, diversos comentarios en respecto a tus condiciones físicas. Y una 
de los rumores más bochornosos que han existido de que tú posiblemente usaste cocaína antes de la pelea. ¿Algún yo, día tú has usado alguna cocaína? No, yo, yo no, yo ni fumo cigarrillo ni nada de esa cosa como cuello de droga. I don't use any drugs. I don't even smoke cigarettes. I don't get involved with none of these things. Never in your life. Nunca. Nunca. Never in his life. Howard. Yes. May I say something about that? Yes. Uh, some of the reports that came about that, as you may well may have noticed, have been reports of negative reaction towards the Rand fans, the Rand family, and the Panamanian people, most of all, because this is where he lives. Never in his career has the Rand been accused or involved or rumored never in his life until this fight that he had been using cocaine or any other drug. And it's quite unjustifiable for any reporter, which I have read the reports, to bring now that he lost this fight any kind of negative report about Duran using any cocaine. Lewis, we've gone as far as we can go, as far as time permits at least. I suppose this will never be answered as to why he quit. There are theories. One was the cocaine theory. Another was a fix of the fight. Absurd. The man got eight million dollars. Louisiana State Boxing Group fined him seventy-five hundred dollars. They couldn't get more because the remaining monies were already in paid under an irrevocable letter of credit. There was so therefore the idea of a fix is totally unlikely. In fact, I consider it indeed impossible. I want to ask Roberto Duran one more question, though. Roberto, there was no urinalysis after that fight. I don't know why. You don't know why either. Perhaps the bedlam prohibits. No había de sudor tampoco. But ¿Cómo? is your story still the exact same as to why you quit? Roberto, después de la pelea, no hubo ningún resultado de la de la urina tuya y no hay ningún récord de ese resultado siendo eso verídico tu historia o lo que tú contaste o la razón por la cual dejaste de pelear es la misma sí señor yes sir the answer is yes would you quit again under the same circumstances tú pararías de pelear bajo las mismas circunstancias Si me da un dolor de nuevo, ¿por qué no? Yes, if I have pains, yo no soy, yo no soy un, un Superman. I'm not Superman. If I have pains and it bothers me, Para mí Leonard no me ha ganado. A mí me ganó fue un dolor, punto y aparte. To me, Leonard did not beat me. To me, illness beat me. A pain beat me. Yo no pensaba pelear más, pero ahora yo sí quiero pelear. Pero voy a pelear, quiero pelear con él de nuevo. Anymore, but I do want to fight now. Y estamos okay. hablando una a una. And we are even, one on one. Porque yo le voy a demostrar que yo soy mucho mejor que él. Well, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate to him that I'm much better than he is. Así que ya sabe. So, All right, Lois. Roberto, thank you. thank you very much for coming up to Miami and doing this show with us tonight. In the meantime, despite Duran's desire to fight Leonard again, you have heard the champion say under no circumstances he doesn't think it's a promotable, workable for students deserve a lot of credit that you haven't gotten for it. And so, for Roberto Duran, Dr. Nunez, Luis Enriquez, and Sugar Ray Leonard, we thank you for being with us tonight, and that's the way it was on November 25th, 1980. Good night, everyone.